You cannot just sit tonight. God bless you. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24. 1 Corinthians 1, 24. Now the Bible says, But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Again, if your Bible is yours and it's not on your tab, can you underline the word Christ? Christ is <laughs> a very deep word. It didn't say Jesus Christ, or it didn't say Jesus. Unto them that are called, both Jews and Christ, did not say Jesus, the power of God and the wisdom of God. It says Christ. Hallelujah. You've read the scripture that says, if any man be in Christ. Tonight, I want to talk about the spirit of wisdom again, but I want to talk about the anointing for wisdom. Everything that God does in New Testament, he does by his spirit. And when we say Christ, which, is, which means the anointed one and his anointing, that is the meaning of Christ. The anointed one. So for instance, Acts 10, 34 says, or 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all them oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He was, sorry, 38, sorry, Acts 10, 38. He was Jesus of Nazareth until the anointing came upon him. Remember, age 1 to age 30 were silent years. But one day by River Jordan, the Spirit of God came upon him and he was no more Jesus of Nazareth. He became Jesus Christ because Christ means the anointed one. Then the Bible says, if any man, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, I want to explain something before we start tonight. There is Christ, a person, which is our Lord, the anointed one himself. There is Christ, a place. So the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, so Christ is a person. Christ is a place. It's a person, it's a place, it's a dimension. Hallelujah. Did you get that? It's also a name. So it's a name, it's a person, and it's a dimension or a place. That will help us to understand what I'm about to say. So if any man be in Christ, that is being in a state, being in a dimension. So here the Bible says, for both Greeks and Jews, Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. That means the wisdom of God is rooted in a person, a place and a dimension called Christ. Are you following me? Praise the Lord. Now, like what I started on Sunday, wisdom has levels. Under wisdom, you have intelligence. Under wisdom, you have counsel. Under wisdom, you have knowledge. Under wisdom, you have understanding. Under wisdom, you have prudence. Yet, they are not the same thing. Being intelligent will help you solve some problems at certain levels. But intelligence can deal with demons and some other things. <laughs> Is somebody following me? So if a demon is in someone's liver, no machine will see it. It's going to go for tests repeatedly. And nothing will be seen because demons are not visible to those machines. I have seen a professor that became stark mad running on the streets. His knowledge could not save him from the forces at work in his life. A doctor can meet a situation in his own body that he can't do anything about. He has a knowledge of medicine. But knowledge, as a matter of fact, they've not even found real cure for cancer. So knowledge at any level is limited. 
especially life can ask you certain questions that your knowledge cannot provide an answer to. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, this is why this dimension that we are talking about is very important, which is the spirit of wisdom. Not, are you, are you, are you following me? Let's read um, Exodus 31. I, I spoke briefly about it on Sunday. I will read it now tonight. As I speak, the Lord is anointing people. Remember, everything that the Lord does, he does by his Spirit. The only person that is on earth right now is the Holy Ghost. God is in heaven. Papa God sits on his throne. Jesus is at his right hand. Because Jesus said it is finished. He has finished his own job and he has passed the bathing to the Holy Spirit. Out of all the Godheads, the only one that is working on earth is Jesus Christ. So his Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God. He came down the day of Pentecost and he has never left. Are you with me? This is why the Bible said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace belonged to Jesus because when he died, he brought grace. And the Bible said the love of God. You know that scripture? Second Corinthians 13, 13 and 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. We close the service with it. And the fellowship. Not the fellowship with the Father. The fellowship with the Father is done by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one on earth. He's the one we can fellowship with. And he's the one who speaks. So the Bible said the Spirit speaketh expressly. You will not be very acquainted with the voice of God if you don't know the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He is the one who lives with us on earth right now. And he's everywhere. So, <laughs> amen. So let's read this portion. Uh, that's uh, Exodus 31. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go on. See, I am called by name. Say, God knows my name. Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of all, of the tribe of Judah. Next verse. I have filled him with the Spirit of God. That is the first thing. I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom. The Spirit of God has manifestations. So in Revelation chapter 4, the Bible says that there were seven candles at the front of the throne of God. And they represent the seven spirits of God. Now, God does not have seven spirits. Actually, it means that it represents seven dimensions of the spirit of God. Or better still, seven manifestations of the spirit of God. What are the seven manifestations of the spirit of God? Isaiah chapter 11. Are you following me? Is somebody paying attention tonight? Amen. So that's what the Bible says concerning Bezalel. I have filled him with the spirit of God, but not the fullness of the spirit. I have filled him with my spirit, but the aspect that I have put upon him is the aspect of wisdom. Not even general wisdom. Wisdom in ability to design things. If we have time tonight, we have several manifestations of the Spirit. Under each manifestation, there are different manifestations. Did you get what I've just said? So for instance, okay, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Now, the Spirit of the Lord, say one. That's a special class. Talk about that another day. Next, the Spirit of wisdom, say two. Understanding, say three. The spirit of counsel, say four. And might. The spirit of knowledge. And of the fear of God, say seven. Samson did not have the spirit of wisdom, but Samson had the spirit of might. Samson was not a macho man. 
If you met Samson when he was alive, he looked just like yourself. No six packs, no eight packs, no pack at all. Samson's anointing did not come from going to the gym. It was a supernatural endowment of the spirit of mind. And the Bible says in Isaiah 59, I think, when the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of God will raise a standard. What is important about that one? If it is the spirit of wisdom or the spirit of might, when there is a challenge, it rises unconsciously. The same way when a Christian moves his faith to a gift of faith, or ordinary faith, faith of confession, to a spirit of faith. Spirit of faith responds to opposition unconsciously. You will say what you never thought of before, some minutes before. It will just leap out of your mouth. Like, um, what happened that time when Bishop Edebo came to the house and his wife said, they I just had miscarriage. He said, you cannot have miscarriage, you cannot have my food. It was not premeditated. And that was the pregnancy that led to their firstborn, Isaac. She saw blood. That is, you, you, you don't try to work up yourself to that point. It's a spirit. Once you are possessed, you are possessed. Have you met, I pray for some before. Have you met witches before? Some of them are very nice. But when it's time to do somebody, the thing comes from within. It's beyond their control. I was listening to someone today who said for 13 years, every time she was pregnant, a man will appear and have intercourse with her in the dream and the pregnancy will disappear. And somebody under the anointing of the Holy Spirit just put the hand. The Paul said, I can't even go with you. I can only pray over an handkerchief. And she held the handkerchief with her. Aprons were taken from Paul. So you don't make a reach out of it, but there are cases where we can do just pray it. And as she was lying down, unconsciously, she was holding the handkerchief. And then she was drifting between sleeping and waking up. And she saw the image again. And somehow, she put the handkerchief and used it to smite the guy coming. Straight away, the mother shouted in the next room, My eyes, my eyes, I've seen in my eyes. And that was when she got pregnant and delivered. And the mother never recovered again. How do you explain that? I don't believe she was a wicked woman, the mother. But see, when this thing is in you, <laughs> it's a possession. When I was growing up, there was a man. I grew up in Sele. He was in our church. He used to be one of the richest men in the city of Abeokuta. He built so many houses, he got so poor that in the morning he would be knocking the tenant's door to borrow him matches to cook. He would borrow kerosene, he would borrow everything. And you know, it's the, it was one of the tenants who started going to say that he invited him to church one day. He had buried seven cows by native daughter all to no avail. By the time they were going to pray in the south, they said people went there to pray in the house. The wife was running like a lion and began to confess. That was the same wife that we followed him to go and borrow kerosene and borrow matches. And she said that 27 years ago he did something, so she decided. <laughs> I'm not saying she start suspecting everybody around her. I'm just saying that. <laughs> if God be for you, <laughs> I don't have time to suspect anybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are, are you following me? Okay. I, I just use those illustrations talking about how possession can be. He lay, so for some say, he was like every other person. But every time they said the Philistines are upon the something, zoom, the thing will just come on him. And he will become a different person. No muzzle, but he will do something beyond the ability of a natural man. In a, in a similar vein, when the spirit of wisdom is at work in you, for Bezalel, you will give Bezalel a contract to do something, he will look at it and he will see beyond normal men. And something will start guiding his eye. By the time you come back to look at, 
You understand what I'm saying? A walking from inside out. So now, the Bible says, I have filled him with the Spirit. So, we read the seven spirits of God now. And I'm saying that, under each of the manif which is seven manifestations of the Spirit of God. So, the Spirit of God can manifest in form of wisdom, can manifest in form of might, can manifest in form of counsel. We're talking about counsel another day. Listen, many people will not become president of nations, but where God will give believers promotion is that governors and presidents, they do listen to somebody. So Joseph was not the king of Egypt, but Joseph was the one drafting every policy in Egypt. Daniel was not the king of Babylon, but nothing happened in Babylon without Daniel. They had the spirit of counsel at work in them. Are you following me? It's one of the endowments coming upon everybody listening tonight. You better say it loud, amen. The whole world is looking for interpreters because everything in life has an interpretation, but interpretation is kept away from people. But believers have an advantage in this regard. So, when we say spirit of wisdom, I'm just saying several spirits, several manifestations. For instance, in Isaiah 61, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to pray the good tidings to the poor, to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and opening of the prison door to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable accept year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to console those who mourn his own, give them beauty for ashes and love, for mourning, garment of praise instead of spirit of heaviness. He has anointed me to preach, say one. He has sent me to heal, say two. That is also different manifestations of the anointing. When the anointing is present in an atmosphere like it is tonight, the anointing can be for teaching. The anointing can be for preaching. He said to proclaim liberty to the captive. The anointing can be for deliverance. Opening of the prison door to them that are bound. To appoint those who mourn in Zion. The anointing can be for worship. The anointing can be for prophecy. You do get that. So when God anoints a servant of God, the manifestation of his own can be like healing ministry like Benin. The same anointing will come upon someone else, but the manifestation will be teaching grace. The same anointing will come upon their bonky. The manifestation will be for evangelism. They don't get that. But it is one spirit manifesting in different ways. The same way the spirit of God can come upon somebody and then there is the wisdom of God being downloaded from within, from above, from within. I get what I'm saying. So for Bezalel, God said that I have filled him with the spirit of God. But then it will manifest in the area of wisdom and then an aspect of wisdom. Bezalel never counseled anybody. It was not given to him. His own wisdom was to rot a walk, not to help somebody in terms of counseling. Joseph never, he did not rot anything. Joseph was to interpret. Daniel was to interpret. Solomon was to rule. Yet, spirit of wisdom. Did you get what I've just said now? Mm. The Bible talks about Stephen in Acts chapter 6 that they could not resist the wisdom by which he was speaking, the spirit and the wisdom. It was upon Stephen, ability to communicate. There is a dimension of the spirit of wisdom that when it's upon you, you cannot lose any case. And not lawyers need them. There is a dimension that your words are irresistible. There's a dimension of it that is in form of counseling. When people sit down with you, it will be as if they have heard from God and you are not prophesying, you are just telling them that why don't you do it this way? It is a godly counsel by the anointing. But these are the operations of the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm trying to say tonight. It's, these are operations of the Holy Spirit. They are not what you read in a book 
It's important to read books. It will enlighten you. It will help you to be very intelligent. But what we are talking about is deeper than what you read in a book. It is an anointing that is obtainable in Christ. An anointing that Jesus gives by the Spirit of God to his people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to end this way. See, when I said, <laughs> we will continue on Sunday. When I said there are dimensions in wisdom, they go to the bitter water of mirror, and the water was bitter. And God said to Moses, cut a tree and throw it inside. There's no technology, there's no explanation for that. They came to Jesus and they said, I know why again. He said, look at that pot there. When the wisdom of God, when the spirit of wisdom is at, at the highest level of it, it's a total foolishness to humanity. Yet it will produce a result that you cannot dispute. Did you get that? There is a dimension of it, that, like Daniel, that you manifest that when Joseph finished talking to Pharaoh, Pharaoh was like, wow. Joseph said, look for a wise man and let him be in charge of this. And Pharaoh said, I saw you. Who else should we look for? You brought the solution. You should help us. Let me say this a, a bit, a little digression. I have said that the wiser you are in terms of God's own way, the more blessed you become or the more you walk in the blessing of God. Seasons will come upon life. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom, has no problem with seasons. Even in your life, there are seasons. There might be seasons when people give to you more than other times. There are seasons where you have more opportunities than other times. What Joseph did was a forensic ability to explain times and seasons. He told Pharaoh, there will be abundance. There is what to do during abundance that when famine comes, we will not feel it. And that famine led the whole world to come into Egypt. Listen to me. In the wisdom of God, he can teach you what to do with plenty that you will never lack again. If you don't pay attention to him, you will waste moments of opportunity. And when the next season arrives, because the Bible has sovereignly declared and there's nothing you can do about it. When they came out of the Ark of Noah, God said to Noah, the first conversation with humanity again, after the first destruction, he said, why the earth remains? Seed, time, and harvest. Is that Genesis 8.23 or 9.23? One of the two, 9.23. Why the earth remains? Seed, time, and harvest. Cold and wheat will never cease. Some words in the Bible came from prophets. Some came from men. Some words came directly from God. God spoke this one. He said, as long as we dwell in this earth, it is seasonal. How to enjoy life is to have the wisdom to know what to do part time. Because the operation, what we need to do each moment is not the same. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is a way to deal with your husband or your wife when they are above 50. That might be different from when they are below 50. There is a change in season before you start having children, that, that is different from when you start having children. When you start having grandchildren, it can be a different season. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, Joseph told them that this is what you should do. And they said that you are the one that can do it. Come and lead us into this. And famine came around the whole world. Once there is famine, like the one that is going on in the, in the world now, and there will be many more, resources will always change hands in the time of famine. Famine will not sink everybody. It will sink some, it will elevate some. You don't get what I've just said now. All of a sudden, all the people selling data. You know the money they made during the pandemic. Some of them are wishing that there should be a lockdown again. Because they are in, their profit was jumping and jumping. All of a sudden, hand sanitizer. Who would have thought that hand sanitizer? I have never thought about it before in the supermarket. And sanitizer for what? Don't I have soap in my house? All of a sudden, face mask. Now we all look like ninjas. It's amazing. Nobody, nobody in January and we say nobody thought about this. Things that you never. So if somebody had a oh God, this is what the Bible says. When the Spirit of God shall come, He will show you things to come. 
Imagine the Lord that told you there were cities in Nigeria, especially in America, where they could not find sanitizers again at the beginning of the pandemic. They were saying they could not find tissues again. And imagine you had a storehouse as big as this church and it's filled with tissue. You just sit at the door outside. That's all you said. <laughs> it's amazing. Wisdom. Many times when the Lord is helping you to prepare for the next phase of your life, let me say this to everybody, it will not tell you why. God doesn't answer funny questions. You just feel in your spirit that, please, hold on at this level. Be careful. Stop going out too often. The Spirit of God will download that information, but it will not tell you why. It does not owe you explanation. When he says that, stop announcing your plans to people, he won't tell you that there is somebody out there that will do this. He will just tell you what he wants to tell you. It's left for you to obey or not to obey. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. And if you check very well, you know, we're about to approach another year. God has given instructions to many and you have left it behind. And many times I discover God doesn't say something new to you until you remember the last thing he said to you. Because it's not a talkative and it does not waste words. Check all through the Bible. When God tells something you don't do it, it keeps going for a while. Yeah. Hallelujah. When he tells you to give, and you don't, and you start praying about your finances, the angels just looking at you. And that's what believers do at times. When he tells you to stop something and you continue to do it, then you're on your own. He still loves you. He has enough time. You are the one that you don't have time. He doesn't grow old. He's the ancient of this. If it will take you 25 years to learn something, believe me sincerely, God who told us to be patient is more than us. He's patient. The lessons that the Spirit of God is communicating to that you refuse to get on time. He can wait. You are the one that can know. You are growing old. And it's waiting. And it's waiting. <laughs> I can only imagine. Thank you, Father. Oh, blessed be your name. Is somebody hearing me tonight? You know, I see by the Spirit. Whether in the area of prudence, being able to handle matters correctly, or in the area of counsel, or in the area of knowledge, uncommon ability to examine things, or in the area of understanding, or in the area of wisdom, something is coming upon everybody here. I will talk about, you know, I said at the highest level of it, I, I will, maybe we'll talk more about that on Sunday. At the highest level of it, it's a voice, it's an instruction by the Spirit. Because it doesn't make sense. When the Lord will tell you to do something that you can't even tell people because it doesn't make sense, yet it brings a, an unusual result. Because at the end of the day, we are going to see on Sunday, the highest form of wisdom is the voice of God. That's all. Moses said that this is your wisdom. That's what the Bible said that in him consists all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And you are complete with in him. The highest manifestation of what we are talking about is in the voice. A voice speaking to you. By the time the voice of the Lord gets to a point where it's as if you are almost hearing audibly, you are across to another level of wisdom. Because it will tell you to take steps that no man can understand. Yet, one step you take will be equal to one million taken by other people. Because you are hearing from the throne or by the Spirit. Yeah. No conventional wisdom would have told that you don't walk on water. Jesus got there, there was no boat again and he just kept walking as if there was nothing. And he walked on water. People are still walking on water now. There can be a door shut against something and then God tells you that no, I have not shut the door but this is the way. Be wasting God a place. Um, where they are in Chicago, where the church is now. I've been there about two times in a very nice place. A massive shopping mall. Just like what happened to us when we were towing. After getting everything, and they were ready, and they were to have service, they had announced their first service. 
maybe the mayor or somebody, somebody in authority just said no. I went to sue them and said they cannot use this place. The church had developed the place and everything. A day to it, it was pacing up and down. And we get to that also on Sunday. These things are rooted in fellowship with the Spirit of God. And it was moving up and down. And the Lord told him, he wrote a portion of the Bible that looked like a law. He wrote it. And he said, go and book an appointment with the mayor and read it. He called the mayor's office. And he said, the man is busy. He told the secretary, tell him, I'm a citizen of America. I'm an, I, 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 I was born, raised in Chicago. I demand that I have to say. And it's okay. He only spent 15 minutes. He said, that's all I need. The Lord said, when you walk in, just read it out to the man. As the man said, stop, reverend. Who are those stopping you from that place? He said, but we have to pass the law. We have to... He said, well, you might have to pass your law. I don't know, but we are, we are having service in that place tomorrow. He said, pastor, can you give me two hours to talk to the parliament and the people in town? After that, I call back, coast clear. In the wickedness of the devil, when we were at Tony Street, many of you, you remember, he waited for us to get the land, pay long lease. Then we imported the tents from China. Actually, somebody imported them, we bought him from the person, from his warehouse. Then they set up the tents. Then we put it in the house. Then we made the floor. Everything should be about 14 million there about. When we're true, we had our first service there. After that first service, no, they didn't see anything when we were constructing. Then, day one, quick notice. Eviction notice. Demolition notice, seal up notice, all in one week, everything. They were just bombarding us every 24 hours. Seal up would have been enough. Which one is demolished? They were just, that's how the devil works. To intimidate you. And when somebody working in Lagos State government, we were Lagos State House uh, building, and he came in, a lady, he looked at it, he said, This can only come from the highest office. He said, Somebody knows the governor directly. Pastor, that was the governor then. He said, somebody knows governor directly who actually sent SMS. Now, it was confirmed later when I met the commissioner. He told me that he didn't want to see the governor. He said, but other than that, they sent him SMS that was sent. He showed me the SMS on his phone. So somebody said to the governor, the governor called him, oh, yeah, act on this issue straight away. And the person said that we had guest houses there. We're making noise there at night. We park control, we block everywhere. The owner of the land had a school. A fence was separating the church and the school. And there was a gate between the fence and the school. The school field could pack all our cars. We did not need to pack. We never park on the road. Blocking anybody. Why would they park on the way we could park inside the school and just walk inside the church? But the guy went to teach. He just said all that. In the room, why pray? In his wisdom, he mentioned someone. He said, call this person and tell the person to call the commissioner and say that you want to. That that's what the person should do. Just book an appointment for you with the, with the commissioner. So I went. But when I was going, the Lord said, I take a picture of everything. Take area view, road view, all views. And put it in an envelope. Take it with you because we need it there. And we got there and we began to talk. Immediately as I entered, the man more or less fell in love. We had three of his staff with him and we began to talk. And he told me that, but I, I said, it's a church. He said, the man said, event center now, not a church. And I said, sir, everything they sent to you, everything is a lie. So I brought out the picture. He looked at it. Ah, he said, this is what is it? I said, yes. He said, no permanent. I said, just thanks. No permanent. Ah, ah. He said, this what is this? Oh, God. He just said, tomorrow morning, I'm sending five for my staff to come and verify. Those ones came. They took a pill. They called him from there. That, sir, it's a different thing that they say from what they reported to you, that there's no permanent. just a tent. That's all. And that we went to school, we saw their parking lot. It can take as many cars as possible. Said, There's nothing, and the man can suit everything. Hallelujah. And of course, he said, I see if you need anything, anytime. Then we began talking about some other things. After that, the, there will be why I'm saying the spirit dimension is that things will stand before you. That your internet cannot do. If you have read all the books in this world, otherwise, professors should not have a problem. But there is a wisdom. Your ask end might have fallen. Who will show you the stick that you caught and you throw there and the answer will float back? A deeper wisdom. I have seen 
where the Lord only has people to adjust the labor on their products. And it looked like there was never like any, any product like that. The way we were rushing it. A little adjustment. Because he is the only wise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. People have been told to change location. And everything changed. There was a lady. She was almost clocking 40 and she was not mad. All that she had was to go and spend holiday with someone. It didn't make sense to her. But she obeyed. She got those people's house. She didn't even like the place. So she was always staying inside, not going out. And one day, a guy came to see them who was one of the top shots in Nepal. And he knocked that they were not at all. So he was the one that opened the door. And he just looked at her immediately. So of course, he didn't say anything. Went back. Came back, came back, started coming every now and then. Until the woman in there started saying, that, ah, told her husband that this is your friend. <laughs> the rent at which is coming to her house. <laughs> <laughs> this sudden love for our house. I finally spoke up. He said, ah, That day when I knocked your door, I saw a lady here. Because after that, anyone they were told, she never showed up. She would just be in the room. So they were the ones attending to him. So he came out three times without saying that. See, no be you I'm looking for. There is someone in your house. But he didn't know how to say initially. He said, It will come. It will come. It will come. And when he saw that sister didn't show up, he said, I beg, let's talk. There was that I came here. Somebody opened the door. Where is that person? Then the wife said, no, I should have, I saw it. I knew all along that you weren't coming to check us. And that was it. The leading of the Holy Spirit is the highest form of wisdom. It overturns mountain by the roots. It cuts water from the rock. The things that are hidden, it brings it out to precious lights. The wisdom of the Spirit of God at work in your life. This is where I want to pick it up from Sunday. What are the practical steps that believers should take in assessing, in working in this? We are going to get there on Sunday. I told you last Sunday that we are going to get there. We will look at, so how did Solomon get it? There was a day in their life. I told you of Joshua, Moses laid, laid his hand on him. Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. And he was filled with the spirit of wisdom. What about Solomon? An open encounter with God. God said that, now I have given you wisdom more than all the kings. And from that day. And as soon as he woke up, a situation showed itself. Two women. Two women. Wisdom does not only help you to solve problems. It gives you fame. And fame is necessary for influence in this world that we live in. Let me tell you something that you need to know. Former, um, I think, secretary or so to first George Bush Senior, the father that led George Bush Senior, said, it is not so much what to say. When you appear before public, it is whether people like you or not. Many times, it's your influence that is the real communication. When people are bought into your influence, when they are bought into you, whatever you say, they nod their head. It resonates with them. And when people don't like you, you can make sense, it will be rejected. Ordinary wisdom will guarantee wealth for some people, but it won't help some other people. The Bible talks about a city that was about to be invaded in the Bible. And a man by his wisdom rescued them. And the Bible said nobody remember the poor man. That is the case with many people in Nigeria. Many of us know, we know uncles, parents, honestly speaking, when you hear them talk, they can fix Nigeria. Not by joke, they are intelligent. When they talk about how government should be structured, but nobody has given them a platform before, and nobody might ever give them one. Because that is another side to it. That's why the Bible says that the race is not to the swift. Battle is not to the strong. It said bread is not to the wise. It said favor not to skillful. It said riches not to men of understanding. Is that Proverbs 9, 11? So there can be men of understanding that riches can stay away from. They help a city, but everybody forgot the poor man's wisdom. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Oh. Say in 2021, you will run and not be weary. 
and it will not be a rat race. You will not run on any other lane except your lane. The Lord will give you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your two hands on your seats. The Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask the Lord. He giveth and he does not hold back. Solomon made the cry one night and something happened. Christ has been made unto us wisdom and power. We get to that on Sunday. We can shout it, we can speak it that Jesus, you are my wisdom. I receive this ability. I receive this grace. I function by this wisdom. Oh Lord Jesus, Christ is my wisdom. And Christ is in me. I open up myself to be carried, to be led by this wisdom. Beyond my mind, the Spirit of God supplying information. In the name of Jesus. If there is a mountain before you, you've been binding and loosing. Tonight, ask for wisdom. Okay, Lord, concerning this matter, there is a way out. Under the light of the Holy Ghost, there are a million ways, a million ways. Can you begin to pray? There is a way. There is a way under the Holy Ghost. I cannot be stopped by obstacle for too long. Lord Jesus, show me. Show me. There is something I'm not doing correctly. There is something I should be doing that I'm not doing. There is something I should not be doing that I'm doing. But there can be light from within that can show me. A simple adjustment and my life is never the same. This story that Pastor Andebo told us. This thing is deep and powerful. The things that are hard with men, they are just simple with God. I don't know whether in a particular state or maybe nation, I don't know. But Yoruba traditional ruler. They are the council one time, maybe for a state, I don't know whether general or for a state. And the head of that council, the Oba that, that was the leader then, they wanted to remove him. And he felt it was something unjust that another king should become the head of that council. And he came to meet. Normally you would say that maybe these are not even crucified. But the guy came and he said, Pastor, what are they? He said the wisdom was just downloaded. 
he was thinking of going to court fighting. He said, no, don't. They want you to step down. He said, this is the wisdom of God for the moment. Go and tell them that it's okay, you are stepping down. But that before you step down, you only need them to show you the person you will hand over to, that's all. So when they met the council the next time, they just said, okay, I've agreed. They were so happy. He said, so who do I now hand over to? Because I'm going to hand over, I'm ready to hand over. And they said, okay, we will tell you maybe in a week's time. So they had a meeting and they began to fight. It should be this one. No, it should be this one. It should be this one. You know, what, what? I became a king before you. They unanimously said, that one said that, if that is the case, then let that man continue. And everybody agreed. You know, when people are fighting, they want to prove a point. He said, so, you think that will pay me? Let him, let him continue. I said, eh, he continue. Continue. And they came back to tell him. I said, please, continue. Because nobody will accept I've heard of people bashing themselves, doing the same thing also. Who oh, will argue and argue? As somebody told me a story, I was not there. Or people that bash themselves somewhere, I don't know whether I get your lecture or so, that, and they began to prove points. And the first one said that, you think it's about my car that you bash? I'm just telling that you are a fool and you don't know how to drive. And that one said that, you think it's the only car I have also? That is more than the car. You are an idiot. And I'm telling you that you don't know how to drive he said, and he called his driver, called the house that he should bring another car. And I was said, you think you are the only rich person? And they called, and they both left their cars there and drove away. One of them said, I can, he said, I can let go. I don't know, I was not there. Somebody said, that they, one of them pointed to a guy standing and he said, if you want the car, this is the key, take. Just to prove to the other guy that, look, you know, people that are really rich, they can use any amount to buy dignity. Yes. Uh, 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 see, rich people don't make noise. But there are things that they do. If they need to defend that right that you can't insult me, they can go to any way. Any length. Yes. Yeah. A friend of mine lost so much money. He made a suit. Like what Shola does. And he brought it to this man. MD, popular, I don't want to mention this office. The man put it on and stood before his mirror and the secretary was looking and said, wow, this is awesome. He said, so he called the secretary to write him a check. There was no transfer then. He said, so how much? And the guy said that, 70K. The man removed and gave it back. He said, I can't wear a suit that cheap. And he said, I'm a, I'm a man of impeccable character. I don't tell lies. He said, my friend, they see it on and they ask me how much. And I said, I cannot tell them that. I said, I'm so sorry. He gave me about 50 or 70 just as a gift. But he gave him the suit back. The guy said that. He said, do he pull my head. That he should have told him 250,000. He would have paid and he would have become his official suit maker. Yes. You know, that's why I said that. You know, in life, there are levels. My, my, another friend of mine, their mom was helping her talk to a woman in Lekki. She had won almost 18 awards in America. She sat down and she wanted to build a website. This was this way, these guys were in UI then. That was what we're doing. And they told her 150,000. I told the mom that, ah, no, 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 it can't be an original work. 150,000 that time should be like maybe 500,000. I said, it can't be an original work. That, ah, no, 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 I'm not doing it again. The mom just used wisdom. I just said that, ah, they are stood at that side there. And she said, oh, no wonder. I was wondering why you said there are three of them, Abby. Three of them sharing 150,000. He said that they would do which washing job from that I don't want. He said, but because they are students, he said, that maybe that's why they are cheap. I will consider them. The day they came, when the mom told them, they said they all put their hand on their head. Why did you say one million? When they came to her house, she said, what do you want? They said, Coke. She was going, she just turned back and looked at them. She said, we don't have such here. She said, we don't have such there. She said, you just drink water, water and sugar? That's what you drink. She said, we don't do that. The five things she mentioned, they had never heard it for. They had not heard their head to one. She said, bring, bring, bring anyone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> on our way, we will be figuring out what kind of drink. He said, Do you want this one? They said, Hell, oh, they did this. They come on. <laughs> they told me when they came, they sat down and they said that for the first time they thought about that, man, there is a world bigger than your world. You can be in the country where you have heard people talk about lack so much 
And you think that's what is going on everywhere. It's not so. It's not so. And it's not everybody that is a thief. Okay? It's not so. All these oil billions we hear about Nigeria, there are people, they are not government officials. They are private people. But the amount they make from oil and all, there are individuals who make nothing less than 100 million per day in this country. And they are not thieves. It's a legitimate business. They might not be so bad, but there are people who do that. It is true. Hallelujah. Before we got to place in Toyin, they took me to a house. Some of these Indian houses, oh, that you don't know what is even inside. I don't want to mention because there might be words I don't expose. They might just demand somewhere around of baby. We found the property on the road and we wanted it. And the agent said, Will take me to the owner of the house. I got to the man's house. He had seven sitting rooms and then inside the compound, seven layers of land, seven levels in the compound. And he was growing all kinds of things in the compound. So he told us that every day, about 11 or so cleaners wash the entire house and compound three times every day. So he said, there is no possibility of death. He said, follow me, pastor. He's an old man. He was one who... He, was, he used to print money for Nigeria one time. He just opened the bonnet of his car, opened the bonnet of one of his jeep. He brought a white tanker jeep and used it to wipe the engine and there was no dust. As we were going, he plugged something on the tree and started chewing. He said, I don't need to wash it. He said, because they wash every compound, every part of this about three times every day. A level staff, just washing. They just wash morning, afternoon, and night. They wash. He said, I ate dead. As he was talking to me, he sat on the floor outside and was wearing a white shirt. This time I was like, Shah Sorokwe, you are giving us the venue. All these uh, other things that you are saying. But at the end, he still said no. He said, you know, I love you, Pastor. I love you, young man. I love your passion. He said, but my idea of that place, I don't want a religious place in that place. You know, I don't want... At a point, I said one or two things. He wanted two. Then his wife came out. And I then fell to the fire. I said, Lord, why did this woman come in? He said, Ah, he said, Look, he said, Look, there are three floors. Your church is looking for one floor. He said, we, he said I, I can't do that. I'm going to put somebody doing fashion. He started explaining, and I said, There's no problem, sir. He now says, I'll say, If you need any other thing, come back here and I'll give it to you. He said, But forget about that building. He took me to his private room. We sat down talking there. So the agent that was with me was a deeper line. I asked, he said, are you born again, sir? He dodged it. Then he said, let me show you different versions of the Bible that I have. And he was showing all different versions. Voice, Bible, everything in the house. But we knew he was not born again. And what showed me was that in this Okwebi, you have this kind of house here. It's amazing. Very quiet man. And he started mentioning eminent people in government. And when they are in Lagos, they book hotel in the day, but they come to sleep in his house in the night. That's what he told me. He said, many of them, when they stay in the hotel, some of them for security reasons, when he's not, they just carry a small car, drive out and come to his, to his house. So that's where, that, that's where they stay. And so they mentioned, he said, six weeks ago, this one was still there, it was in my house. You know, I say this to everybody prophetically, your wealth is multiplying. Yeah. Hallelujah. You will help the weak. You will help the poor. We will rebuild our nation. And then, most importantly, you will further the expansion of the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. We bless your name. We give all the praise. Is someone blessed tonight? Like I said on Sunday, when this meeting is over, when you get home tonight, find time to pray. When the message is preached, six hours, 12 hours after the message, the anointing is always still in the atmosphere. So I've told people before, you are likely to have more encounters with God if you are the type that when they share the grace, you stay for even if it's five minutes on your seat praying, than those who rush out. That's part one. But the major part, why the message is still, the aura of the message is still on you. When you get home, 
maybe after dinner, switch, switch away from him, switch off from everybody and begin to pray. The anointing, the aura of the presence is still very much available. It weighs with time. The spirit, the anointing, is like a fragrance in the realm of the spirit. When you use a perf, as soon as you put it on yourself, it begins to win. It smells most when it's on you, when it's just freshly on you, after a while. And you know that perfs are also in categories. There are some perfume that, you know that type, all those 2,000 era. You put them in your pockets. Because when you take Okada, by the time you are coming down, it's completely gone. So you have to take it as you, there are, those are the perfs that you, when you come down from the bar, you reapply. Then you walk. When you're about to enter the venue of the wedding, you apply again. That is only guarantee. That, that's the only way you are guaranteed a measure of. But there are some, they say this perf is 60K. I saw one before. I wanted to buy a gift for somebody, uh, one, one senior pastor. I wanted to buy a gift for him. And I was thinking, what should I buy? So I just walked in the shop and it was his birthday. And then it was his 50th birthday. So I was like, what should I buy for this man? So I was looking, looking, and then I saw one perf like that. And I asked the woman, how much? I said, 250,000. I just started laughing where I stood. I said, then I saw one, 470. I said, she know the perfect, yeah? 470. So, <laughs> I know some of you, you'll be imagining how you'd have bought 40 pieces of shirts. With that, yeah. And there are things that are that expensive. Yes. I've seen a show of 1.2 million before. I just said to myself that waiting. Uh-uh. With 100,000, 100, go and buy five or six. And they won't know the difference where we start. But you see, they might not know the difference in some places. But in some other places, they will know the difference. And don't start by saying, how can they buy a show? But you, the one you are buying also, some people cannot afford it. Remember, life is a level. It's important. Now, you can make a choice. You can have billions and choose that you wear something. So There are many rich men who will not buy anything expensive. I love those people. There are people who do that. There are rich men that don't use common phone. They use common phone. Is it not to call? Every other thing a secretary can do it for them. They, do, they don't do their meals. They do it for them. So they just say, okay, we not care. Hallelujah. What I don't understand that you, that your total money, all the money you account is 170 and you are buying a phone of 135. What is wrong with you? <laughs> this is why <laughs> you're going to depression when it is stolen. <laughs> you call upon God, you cost the thief. <laughs> you cost. <laughs> because after buying the phone, you are left with 20K. And then you can't find it again. You, you cause, you are depressed for days. They think you are sick, but you are not sick. <laughs> Let's rise and give God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> so God be the glory. We bless your name. We worship you. Oh, Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Help us to be doers of the word. Help us, Lord, to find time tonight to meditate and to pray. Lord, as many of us that will take time to pray tonight, at any time in the night, let this mess expand this message in our hearts more. Show us our own portion in this. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout a living amen. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ and by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.